Well, welcome. Lots to be excited about as we begin our inaugural LEADX journey on this kind of gray, wet day. And we don't really have a plan beyond just seeing some of our nation's landmarks and points of interest along the way. And we're going to be talking about some of the people who walked the very ground in centuries past and who helped get us to where we are today. This is also the first trip for our 1994 G-Wagon, George, as we call him, in his new configuration. We've installed a roof rack and a kitchen in a box to help sustain us along the way. We'll show you how that works too. But you know, one of the objectives of this first expedition is to do some systems checks to see what works and what doesn't. So this is your expedition as well, and we look forward to having you join us for this first and we hope epic LEADX experience. So let's go. Well, we got here quite by accident, but it was really the best kind of accident that I'll explain later because it led us right here to the only outdoor monument to presidential bathing. We're right along the west side of Berkeley Springs State Park. And Berkeley Springs, if you haven't been here, is in West Virginia. It's just a beautiful little town that has the distinction of being America's first spa town. Back then it was called appropriately and, and really simply Bath. More on that later too, but in the 1700s, the mineral waters were known as the ye famed warm springs and, and they attracted the early settlers who wanted a taste of the fountain of youth. And when George Washington was just 16 years old, he was a surveyor's assistant then and he came here to these West Virginian warm springs that are a constant 72 degrees to bathe and to recuperate and to relax. He liked it so much that he eventually purchased property here in town and continued to use the springs as a favorite place to freshen up. Um, Berkeley Springs remained throughout his lifetime a favorite spot for the president to dine and to relax and of course to bathe. Before 1784, Washington would have bathed in the springs using scooped up pools lined with sand and rocks. And for privacy, brush was woven into natural screens and men and women would have had their own designated times to come and bathe. Now, those screens aren't here anymore. The brush isn't here. Uh, a lot has changed, but the existing stone tub that you see here, let me just turn the camera around here, was constructed to represent those early bathing conditions. Today, it's a favorite spot for hikers to stop and to pose for a photo and even soak their feet. The bathtub attracts as much attention from tourists as it does from locals. What you see here is a modern replica. It was built to represent those that were lost through time. The springs bubbling up into the tub, however, are of course one and the same. Washington wrote about his visits here to the Springs on several occasions in his, in his letter to the Reverend Charles Green on August 26, 1761, Washington wrote, We found both sexes, about 250 people at this place, full of all manner of diseases and complaints, some of which are benefited while others find no relief from the waters. Two of three doctors are here, but whether attending as physicians or to drink the water, I know not. It is thought the springs will soon begin to lose their virtues and the weather gets too cold for people not well provided to remain here. They are situated very badly on the east side of the steep mountain and enclosed by hills on all sides so that the afternoon sun is hid by four o'clock and the fog hangs over us till nine or ten like ghosts with occasional great damps in the mornings and the evenings to be cool. 
It's a funny story about how we got here to Berkeley Springs. This wasn't on the itinerary in any way, shape or form, but uh, you know, I was up in Gettysburg and we were gonna uh, head up north towards New York, but you know, um, the plan was to go camping and do some winter camping. We're well prepared to do that. The problem though, is that there are hardly any campgrounds that are available and uh, no places that are really available given all of the snow as well and that's something that we should have anticipated and so uh, I did find one campground that was in the vicinity but um, one of the problems is there's no Wi-Fi in Gettysburg uh, for some reason I've never had that problem before and so when I did get a signal I pressed directions and it started directing me south and then I realized when it was too late that uh, that I was going in the wrong direction so a comedy of errors without question, but uh, Siri found this place that was close by and so we headed in that direction and what we found ourselves on was George Washington's historical trail and this is a place that he frequented, it's a place that he loved well before the Revolutionary War when he was just 16 years old and, uh, and then he bought some property in this area when he was 18 and that's another site that we're going to be going to see right now. So. Here we are in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, formerly Bath, Virginia. It's just a great place. I hope you come and see it. Hey, Michael, how are you? I'm excellent, sir, and yourself? Good. Can you tell us a little bit about this place, the Roman Bath House? Yes, sir. So this is the old Roman Bath House. It is one of the oldest spas in the South. The original spa went in here in 1757 as a Lord, as a grant uh, from King George to Lord Fairfax, the guy who originally owned all of Virginia. Um, we have we have been measuring our water at about a thousand gallons a minute ever since 1757. Uh, we have seven springs. They all are within about four acres of this park. They all come right through here. They provide all the drinking water for the town and all of the water for the bath here. Uh, it is heated naturally to 74 degrees. We heat it a little bit more. We put it in our hot water heater and heat it up to about 102 and then you get to sit down and do nothing at all. The most fantastic 30 minutes of your life. Can we take a look at one of them? Absolutely. Unfortunately, they are not filled at the moment. Uh, so this is what they look like actually full. And as you can see, they are very beautiful. Yes. We can get up to four people in the tub. So you can come in, bring your bring a group, bring some friends, and all sit down and relax and enjoy the water. It is an incredible experience. And tell me a little bit about the water. You're talking about um, no cesium. Oh, yeah. So our water, our aquifer is apparently so deep that our water as of yet has not tested positive for cesium. Cesium is a byproduct of nuclear weapons, and all groundwater is contaminated with some of it. But our water is not. Our water is, in fact, so pure that the United States Geological Survey comes up here to get samples of our water to use our water as their baseline because our water is so consistent that they can't make better water. That's awesome. It is. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Have a wonderful day.